Hi everybody, welcome to the QB School. I'm JT O'Sullivan. Today, Taylor Heineke, the Washington football team putting on a show versus the Bucks. A lot of fun to watch. This is going to be a fun one to break down. Let's get it started. Welcome to the QB School. So the idea for this video came from Coach Zach Yates. JT O'Sullivan, I expect an amazing video covering the show Heineke put on tonight. And from Christopher Floyd, can you please do a Taylor Heineke video very soon? Does Washington have something in him? I believe so, but I would love your input. Thanks in advance. Well, I don't know about amazing, and I'm not sure I'm quite convinced about the future, but that game was a blast to watch. And Taylor Heineke was the best player on the field for the Washington football team. And it was fun to see him thrive in such a unique way crazy experience getting your first real playing time real game action real start in a playoff game versus tom brady and going toe to toe down to the final drive and making some plays some splash plays throwing the ball think you're really going to enjoy how we break it down now i will say that this is very much a highlight type video there are a few plays where i think he could have improved upon and there are certainly some throws over the course of the entire game when you watch the all 22 that I think would need a little bit more explanation. But this is really a video celebrating. Something I know my man, the Tominator, would love to do. And it is just celebrating a great performance in a really crucial, important, crazy life experience for Taylor Heineke. So cool to see him make himself some money, find a spot in the league to hopefully hold on for a few years and get a great opportunity to thrive. What it becomes moving forward. Who knows, but celebrating that performance is something I want to really take my time and enjoy this video, so let's get it going. So the first play here is a corner and a flat up top. They blow the coverage. Looks like they got two players running to the flat. Heineke does a nice job seeing it, delivering the ball on time. Now this is wide open in NFL standards for sure. They got a miscommunication there. Working the free safety in the corner, but great job getting the ball out on time. Throw it right at him. And that's got to feel good early in the game. I think this might have been the first completion. Great job being able to see it, throw it. Again, you can see coverage-wise here, anytime you're in a bunch, you're going to have some sort of defense is usually going to have to make some sort of adjustment call. What I mean by that is you can see here, however they sort this thing out, right? Four over three here. So right here, we're just going to run up, and we're running basically trying to put a two-on-one with this little seven or corner. With this flat, they end up getting a miscommunication here and having two run with this quick out. Creates this big void out here for the seven. Great job being able to see it, throw it. Again, just because it's open, you still got to be able to deliver the ball, put it on him. Sometimes those are the harder throws. Again, two guys to the flat. There it is. Great. Again, if that wasn't there, if we worked up top, trying to get that high-low, if it wasn't there, you come back to this in and a shallow. It's a really nice in down here. Look at him get on the technique of the corner before he breaks it down, gets out of it quick. Da, da, da. Whew. And he hits a bunch of ins on here that I didn't put in the video, but does a nice job working through essentially this concept. Cover three beaters all day. You can see 32 here. Looks like he's trying to give almost like a box call there. Again, without knowing exactly what the call is being in the room, hard to know for sure. But again, great job by Heineke being able to get it out on time. Quick, put it on. Great, let's go. Next one here, similar concept as far as almost flooding, high-lowing an area. It's not there. We've got some pass protection issues. Again, up top, just a different way to get to the high-low. Again, you can see the, the flat with that wider swing with the motion. And we're going to get a scissors up top. We have a pass protection breakdown, and he's able to get out on the edge and throw the ball accurately. I think this probably startled everybody watching the game, everybody who doesn't know him, even the Bucks, that he's this athletic. You know, they've got some pass pro issues. He gets out. He's running away from people. Dropping darts on the run outside the pocket. Really nice. Again, concept-wise here, though, you know, nothing special. They've got a bunch of, you know, not the most complicated defenses he's seen, but doesn't take away from the performance here. We come up here. We're going to the scissors here. And then really this is this tear or gash motion up here with the swing. Come in here with the seven. So at the end of the day, it's a high-low. We just did the same thing. Now it's just from the backfield with the slot. That's all they're doing. 
That's not there right away. We can see here, we'll break it down from the back end, what happens protection-wise. But again, this is Taylor Heineke being athletic, making plays on the perimeter. Great. I mean, technically, when he's inside the pocket, even if there wasn't issues, there wasn't going to be a place to go with the ball. Great job getting outside. Again, you can see the motion here, fast three. They don't adjust. They just push it. 23 pushes out. 54 pushes over. You can see it there. To me, the back here is probably incorrect without knowing the exact pass pro they're in. I think the back has 51 to 31 on a dual. You can see the, sl the line almost sliding to 54. Again, would love to see that center pick up 51, not let a free runner run by his hand. That's just me, though. A little pizza there. But again, regardless, the left tackle takes an L. He's going to have pressure. Gets out of there. He's running away from a linebacker. Strike. Give his guys a chance to make plays down the field. Whew! Let's go. Next one here. Great job. Third and eight. I love this throw. Timing. Speed out up top versus cover zero. Get the ball out. Get hit. Strike. Anticipation. Beating cover zero in the red area. This is one of my favorite plays of the game. Again, pass pro wise, we'll take a peek at. We got some, you know, some issues potentially with the guys who the offensive line don't hear the same cadence all the time. But this is cover zero, right? Nobody in the middle of the field. Just a speed out up top. And he throws this thing with timing and anticipation. One, two, three. Back foot. Throw in it. Look when he goes to separate here. Wide receiver's not out of the break yet. Not outside the numbers. Let it go. And then the accuracy. Ball up on the face on the sideline. So good. Great job beating cover zero. Kind of wish they had an opportunity to get to the post here by one of these guys. But that's just me. Big time third down completion. Whew. Love it. Great quarterbacking. From under center here, you can see to me the center is just a little late more than anything else. We'll slow this thing down. They're in a full slide. And watch the center, watch the right tackle, left guard. They're moving before the center snaps, right? The center got to help yourself just a little late. Because he's late, now he has a hard time getting over all the way. I'm guessing that's Sue in the three technique, shooting the A-gap. And that's tough. And that's the issue. Again, just the little things that happen when you got a, you know, you don't have the same quarterback in there all the time. They don't get used to the cadence, the rhythm of it. But again, usually the center is the one that's cheating on those. This is a great design down here to the bottom. Hitting a little down, out, and up, old school. Run to the park, fountain up to the tree. Great design here. Eight person protection, selling the run, big play action fake. Again, cover three beaters for days in this game. You know, if I'm being honest, I know y'all appreciate that. That's Tozy right there, huh? But again, no real heel click. Uh, a little bit of a heel click there. Tozy, but still drives it, goes to drive it, and it's it's open. It's great design. Beautiful design. I don't. I can't remember seeing this much straight cover three zone in this type of game. Again, 22 personnel here. 13 personnel. I don't know what the fullback is, a tight end or not. Just cover three with a little post glance and a wheel or out and up down here to the bottom. You can see what it does to the flat defender. He goes to the out. That flat defender's running out to the out down here to the bottom of the screen. He never even sees him go up. So just really great design here. Again, no heel click at the back. He's lined up. Nice fundamentals there. Gets the ball out on time. Boom. On the body, on the break. Love it. That's great design. Nice execution. And you can see the ball handling. You know, a little bit of like that offhand, just off. See how you can see that offhand there a little bit? Normally you'd put that on the gut, especially with the quarterback coach they got in Washington. But great job getting it out on time. Making plays. I mean, thriving. Just... People gushing over it, and rightfully so. Halftime, you dig the channel and you haven't already. Please subscribe, hit the bell, get the notifications, let you know when we go live, when we put out new content. I appreciate the continued support. Another great design here, first and 10. Love the fact, again, we're faking this swing, just cover three beaters, a little sail. Again, look what it does to the flat defender. 
You get this motion, makes a fast three, pushes that fat, flat defender down here to the bottom of the screen quickly with the wide, and creates that space for the sale. And really, this is almost like a three-layer cake. They do like the deep flag and the seven. Love teams incorporating this ghost or motion around the back, full slide, protect it up, let him kind of cut the field in half and just see it high to low. Design-wise here, really nice. Again, this is, you know, I can't remember the last, you know, years ago you would never see this type of motion in a league. This was like a college special. But really all this is is we're coming down here. We're running that deep flag. We're running that sail or seven. And then we're running this swing from here. So again, this is just a flood, right? Normally you'd read this one to two to three. And really this is verse kind of a special look. 1A, you got to really love it down the field. And it's just you're high lowing this flat defender. And when this flat defender predetermines because the motion, right? We talked about this fast three here going out. It's going to make this flat defender push earlier and clear up this window to the seven even earlier than normal if you were to just go kind of a one by three nub here. So again, using motion really intentionally. See what it does to the flat defender down here? It cleans the look. Great, great protection, full slide. That's a great throw. Ripping it from the pocket. But that's open. And that's clean three. Yes, please. Let's throw it. Great pass pro. I'm a big fan of full slide with the back coming across. A little play fake. Boom. Drive it. On him. Accurate. Ball outside the numbers. Lots of good stuff. Here we get a little scramble off what I'm going to consider uh, four verticals with a little jerk route down here to the bottom slot. Now, we'll talk a little bit about Coverage-wise, bracket-wise, what they're doing here in quarters or bracket. But more than anything else, you know, this is why I think people start thinking a little Romo-esque. Although I'm not even sure Romo had this type of like vertical speed. But just staying alive in the pocket, base, you know, crafty. You know, I, eyes downfield. I mean, there's this is this is some cool quarterbacking. Guys fighting for him. But right here, getting vertical. You know, I'm not a fan of offensive linemen just standing around looking. It's a fast way to rub me the wrong way. You know, for instance, like the right guard here, swinging and missing, and then just kind of chilling while your quarterback is fighting. But again, getting used to playing with people, I'm not going to make excuses for him, but that's a great effort from Heineke. Now, concept-wise here, you know, this is where I think, you know, as you play more, as you start to be able to see more, know exactly what you're looking at, this is not middle field closed, right? This looks like either quarters or some variation of bracket. So how they end up sorting this thing out, normally I would say if you see this shell and you have what I'm going to call a variation of four verticals, which that's what that is to that side, here they have a little jerk here where they come up, fake the hitch, and come underneath. That really is the check down. So normally you're, you're just working one, pick your matchup across the board here, to two, to the jerk. They do a great job covering the jerk. Now, how they get here on the back end here with this quarters, the difference between quarters and brackets is depending on, there's a bunch of different ways to do it. You've got a full course on it. But when you're going to carry the two here, meaning that coming across here, they come here, coming up the seam here, up the seam here, and this guy's carrying the two, there's a real opportunity to throw this ball right here. Now, that's the difference between being able to identify quarters and bracket. What are they doing with the two? Are they carrying people? What exactly is going on? So, again, we'll watch it right here. Just play that thing out up top if you were to throw the two. You can see that, what it does to that field safety. He's got to carry the three vertically. He's trying to cut that seam down here to the bottom of the screen. You know, just being able to identify what those little differences are. You can see you basically have one-on-one -on -one up top with the one and the two. Normally, I would say, hey, if you see quarters like this, you want to throw the check down or the jerk or the shallow, often paired with it. And this is just a great job by the linebacker running with that jerk. It's covered. Go make a play. He does a great job staying alive, being athletic, dynamic athlete, getting up the field, protecting yourself. I mean, it was great.
you, you know it's great when you're watching TV, the TV copy, and you're like, man, he's making plays, staying alive in the pocket. And then you watch the All-22, and it kind of reaffirms good decisions. And I think, obviously, you'd probably love to protect the ball there better, but love it. Making plays. And that wasn't the only scramble. This third and five was just a ridiculous football play. There's nobody open. Whatever they're trying to do here, it ain't there. Get out on the edge, and then this vertical, boom, dive, hit the pylon. I love me some pylon. I always think guys should go more at the pylon than over the pylon. If you hit the pylon, you're in. Again, see some similar themes here as far as staying alive in the pocket. Now, there's certainly some luck here, you know, as far as guys not tackling, running through one-arm tackles. But this right here, that acceleration to the pylon, just elite finish. Look, the goal line judge gets knocked into the TV here. Boom. Trips over himself. Pad saves him. Love it. It's just a, a really special play. And when you're watching it in real time, you know, it kind of had that Indiana feel. Reach for the pylon. Stay alive. Again, the thing I love about staying alive, not only is he staying alive, but check his base. No heel click. Keeping his eyes downfield for the most part. It's out there, and then this decision right here to tuck it and accelerate for the pylon. And then he jumps from just inside the four-yard mark. You know, he's looking at an 11-foot jump there. Boom. Just a massive play. Got his teammates fired up, just really galvanizing a group. Really just special, special play. Not forcing anything, staying alive, but then this right, boom. I mean, Tampa Bay is not a slow defense. Whew, what a play. Special. Third and ten here for the next last touchdown. Corner up top to the number two. This is an absolute dime. Again, same thing here as far as some brackets. Still man-to-man -man on that number two up top. Same thing as trying to get that vertical we talked about earlier with the four verts. Now it turns into a corner. Crosses up his technique. And this is a dime. I love the accuracy. Love seeing DBs hit the stands. Boom. Great job seeing him get this thing out on time. One, two, three. A little shuffle. Let it go. Again, you know, he'd do himself a favor to dovetail a little bit. He's taking himself into pressure there. You can see he gets himself into it, but doesn't have to step through it. You know, throwing like an old school phone booth there. Up and down. The timing of this more than anything else. And then I've talked about this on this channel before. But worth revisiting here with just the accuracy of this throw because it is perfect is when you get down to this red area a lot of teams run these corners hence it's called a corner right pretty self-explanatory we're running to the corner and so young quarterbacks will make the mistake of the back pylon being the landmark well in reality you want to throw this thing halfway between in the back of the end zone so split the end zone in half right here on the sideline it's not on the film here but if this were the sideline you put that thing right on the sideline so the wide receiver runs to the back pylon and then kind of has the angle on this ball. It's a beautiful thing. I used to copy from far watching them do this like handoffs in practice. But it's really important not to throw it at the back lot, at the back pylon. And you can see right where that ball is. And this is a great route, getting up, closing on that defender, running away from him. But that accuracy is world class. Perfect. You can see how if you were to throw it to the back pylon there, that wide receiver would have to adjust back over his right shoulder way harder than it has to be. So really important, throwing those corners down in the red area. Throw it halfway in the end zone on the sideline. Dime. My goodness, what a throw. So fun to watch. Just can hear the cash register. Whew, love it. So good. Then this final drive, this was kind of a bummer. Not a full highlight video here. Third and 10. To me, you know, take a sack here. Tough. Up top, little switch release with an in route or a middle field read. He's going to wish he kind of shuffled to the right and threw this. And again, there aren't many plays like this. There are a handful of plays in this game where he probably misses the throws or doesn't quite get it out on time. Right here, to me, this was one of them, and it's just unfortunate that it happened this time in the game because you really felt like 
we're working towards a really magical moment here as far as him being able to come back against Tom Brady, those types of things. Again, I love me a switch release. Really, two great options here. So we switch release this thing. The first thing here is a big post. Now, he could shuffle and throw this thing, and this would be a, a magical moment. That's a touchdown. I think, in reality, he's probably coming back here to work this middle field, whether it's a double post or a middle field read here. Middle field open, you take it. Middle field close, you come across. This is a massive hit. So when he comes back, doesn't like it originally, shuffles here, the ball must get out to one of these. To me, it's here, one to two, but who knows how they're asking him to read it. Both of them are there, and just kind of a, you just kind of wince a little bit here at the end of the game. What could have been one, two, three, four, five. You can watch the switch release first. Love that. Distort it. Get the angles you want. Now you've got that middle field read, the basic over the middle. It's wide open right there. If you want to hang and throw the post, if you're going to work off that middle field player, what looks like is going to be almost quarters, rotate to three. Normally you wouldn't think you'd have a big post, but he comes down on that crosser or the basic or the in and let it go to the post up top. Oh, oh, bummer. But what a performance. So much fun. Really, you know, fun to watch in real time. Fun to go back and see it in the All-22. Love to see him compete here all the way through this thing. You know, one, two, three, four, five. Quick little pocket move right there. You could just see, you know, he had such a great game moving around in the pocket. He either, you know, shuffle up there and let it rip. You can see that in coming across at the very top of the screen, barely the shadow. Oh, but then he's competing right here. You can tell. Love it. So that is a wrap. Taylor Heineke, Washington football team. A lot of fun and really kind of impressive on so many different levels. Both, you know, his opportunity, playing at the level he did, throwing the ball down the field like he did, running, making plays, just a blast to watch across the board. Thank you so much for hanging to the end. I will see you next time. Have a good one.